The Islanders overcame a slow start and turned the tables on the Blues to win their fifth straight. We've got our key takeaways from the game, plus a full preview of Saturday afternoon's game in Detroit. All that and a lot more coming up on this episode of the Locked On Islanders podcast. Your Locked On Islanders, your daily podcast on the New York Islanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome, everybody, to the weekend edition of the Locked on Islanders podcast. Gil Martin, so glad you could be with us today. And thank you for making Locked on Islanders your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Bet BetOnline has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. We have got more to discuss on today's show, but first, if there's something Islanders related on your mind, if you have a question, a comment, maybe something you'd like us to talk about on a future episode, feel free to send us an email. The email address, as always, LockedOnIslanders at gmail.com. And if you leave your first name and where you're from, we are happy to mention you on the show when we discuss whatever it is that's on your mind. You can also follow the show on Twitter at Locked On Isles, and you can follow me, Gil Martin, on Twitter at Ice Wars, N-Y-R-V-S-N-Y-I. We'll keep you up to date on all the latest Islanders news, notes, and happenings, and I am live tweeting during nearly every Islanders home and road game. So join me for instant insight and analysis, and always great to talk Islanders hockey with Islanders fans and whether it's during the game or at any time. So please feel free to contact me via Twitter or via email. Big win for the New York Islanders, their fifth in a row. And this one, I think, was just particularly satisfying. The first period was a tough one. And why? Well, the Islanders came out a little bit flat. And... We knew St. Louis, and we talked about this when we previewed this game, that St. Louis was going to be a dangerous team. Uh, They had lost five in a row. They certainly needed to turn things around. They had an embarrassing performance in some respects in their last game. And you knew they were going to be a little bit desperate. And I said... Uh, yesterday, when we were previewing this game, the Islanders are either catching the Blues at the exact right time or the exact wrong time. Well, it turned out in the first period, didn't look like it was good. But in the second period, the Islanders get four goals in 10 minutes and four seconds. You come out in the second period and Kyle Palmieri scores just 14 seconds in. And that was like the turning point. All of a sudden, all the doubts that the Blues had resurfaced. And the Islanders just gained their confidence back. And then you get the power play goal by Brock Nelson. And then the Bailey goal, which was a, a you know a typical Bailey goal in the sense that it was an impossible angle. He's behind the net, but has the vision has that hockey intelligence, banks the puck in off of Nick Letty and in behind Jordan Bennington, and it's 3-1 Isles. Then Anders Lee makes it 4-1. And you, you, you just felt the momentum of the hockey game change with the Palmieri goal 14 seconds in. Goals in the first and last minute of a period can be such momentum changers. And boy, did that goal by Palmieri help change things around for the Islanders. It really made a difference. And great to see Palmieri get his third goal of the year. I know he didn't have uh, even two goals until, what, 30 games into the season a year ago. And just the way the line combinations are kind of working out, it, it, it just seems like First of all, Bavillier, Nelson, and Lee, boy, they are cooking. They are playing extremely well. Barzal with another assist. 
the the line combinations that this uh that lane lambert and his coaching staff put together have worked exceptionally well two assists for dobson in this game he continues to be productive offensively and i i'm just very pleased with the character that the islanders showed in coming back after a flat first period on the road they didn't let the game get away from them they played exceptionally well in the second period and put this game away once they got the blues on their heels they didn't look back now did the islanders uh get a couple of breaks i wouldn't even call them breaks but they got some calls they deserved them but they got them a couple of goals uh waved off one for goalie interference i thought it was the right call and another one uh where they ruled that the puck did not go in before the goal came off and got dislodged so even though neither goal counted i think the islanders deserved to win those two uh challenges or or those two reviews and it worked out to their benefit but bottom line character and goaltending how good was Ilya Sorokin the two goals that were given up both of them kind of on deflections not the kind of goals that you could say oh yeah Sorokin blew it it was a soft goal it was a bad goal no not at all and you know he is again one of the reasons this team is so good and how about the identity line no they didn't score in this game but five hits for Matt Martin four hits for Cal Clutterbuck by far the top two on the team and again they got the job done and the three P line Pajot, Palmieri, Parise all plus twos the line combinations that the Islanders have put together seem to be working exceptionally well right now the result has been five straight wins good defense and and again character to come back after a sluggish first period so so important that this team is showing that one little criticism i wanted to mention anders lee dropping the gloves with nico mikola in the second period i think it was a mistake couple of reasons number one it's not a good trade anders lee for uh mikola definitely that trade benefits the blues and second of all the blues were trying you know mikola was trying to give his team a spark they were down four to one they had given up four straight goals if you're anders lee why give them that potential spark now lee won the fight so that certainly helped put out the fire so to speak and maybe prevent that momentum shift from being so big but you know to me if i'm anders lee and he had a goal and an assist i'm not complaining about his performance in any way shape or form but he really should not have dropped the gloves at that time didn't end up costing the islanders and they win so five to two win five in a row they'll go for six saturday in detroit we'll have a preview of that game Plus, a former Islanders captain is going to be our Islanders' birthday of the day. So all that and a whole lot more still to come on this episode of the Locked on Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by your friends at BetOnline. BetOnline.net is your number one source for betting on football and the start of the new basketball season. You can find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news podcast and in-depth analysis on every game and as always bet online remains your continued source for all your sports wagering information with live betting and up to the minute scores for every sport out there it's the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite games and events including the world series mma boxing golf and of course the nhl if you're confident the islanders will get their six straight win saturday head to bet online and check out the odds. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. Thanks for making Locked On Islanders your first listen today. Now make your second listen game to game NHL. Every moment, every top performance, every result. 
Locked On Game to Game covers every contest from across the National Hockey League with local analysis that only Locked On can deliver. Follow Game to Game on Locked On NHL. It's available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. So the Islanders will go for their sixth straight win Saturday in Detroit. It's a 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern time start, so an afternoon game for the Islanders. Then they'll be in action again Monday evening at home against the Calgary Flames. So, uh, And then the Rangers Tuesday, so that's going to be a very interesting uh, back-to-back, to say the least. But Detroit... Coming in right now, playing a little better than I think most people expected. They are 5-3-2, and coming off a 3-1 to win over the Washington Capitals, that game being played last night. So, you know, Detroit kind of exceeding expectations right now. Billy Huso giving them some very strong goaltending. Dylan Larkin and Dominic Kubelik kind of leading the way. David Perron, also five goals on the young season. And, you know, Detroit kind of in the midst of a little uh, homestand here. This will be their second straight home game. So they'll be waiting for the Islanders who are continuing their road trip. And, you know, goals for and goals against Detroit still kind of a little below the middle of the pack. Penalty kill is middle of the pack, 13th, power play 23rd. Nothing special there, but they are getting the job done with good team efforts. We look at the line combinations, top line, Dylan Larkin, David Perron, and Lucas Raymond. Andrew Kopp now centering the second line with Elmer Soderblom and Adam Ernie on either side of him. Michael Rasmussen is the pivot on the third line with Dominic Kubelik to his left, Philip Zadina to his right, and then it's Joe Valeno with Pius Suter and Matt Luff on either side of him. On the blue line, Ben Sherratt and Morris Sider are the top pairing, and that is a very solid top pair. Oli Mata and Philip Ronick are the second pair, and then Robert Hag teams with Gustav Lindstrom on the third pair. The goaltending duo right now, Vili Uso and Alex Nedeljkovic. Huso playing well, Nedeljkovic struggling. A lot of injuries right now on IR. Tyler Bertuzzi, Jake Wallman, and Robbie Fabry, along with Ye- uh, Jacob Verana. Meanwhile, Oscar Sundqvist listed as day-to-day, and Mark Fisick is out of the lineup. So, you know, some injuries affecting Detroit. This is a team that can use their speed and use their offensive ability to really make things tough for the opposing team. And it'll be important for the Islanders to prevent guys like Dylan Larkin and David Perron from having too much time and space in the middle of the ice. If they come into the Islanders zone with speed, it's going to be a rough ride for the Islanders. And uh, we'll see what happens. Meanwhile, as far as the goaltending goes, uh, it was Huso in goal against Washington on Thursday night. So maybe Nedeljkovic gets the start against the Islanders. It would be certainly uh, a little better because Nedeljkovic only one and two on the year with a 4.96 goals against average and an 8.71 save percentage. Compare that to Huso. 3 1 and 1, 2.40 goals against and a 926 save percentage. Now they have, you know, more or less split time, more or less. So we'll see who the Islanders face. And I would suspect that it'll probably be uh, Simeon Varlamov in goal for the Islanders on Saturday. Wanted to get to a couple of your questions. Always great to hear from you. So uh, we have an email from Vinay from Smithtown. Hey, Gil, any insight on why Oliver Wallstrom only had a little more than eight minutes of playing time in the game against Chicago? 
He was second to last in that category, beating out Casey Sezikis, who only had 46 seconds, uh, and well behind every other skater. Love the show. Keep up the good work. First of all, thank you so much, uh, Vinay, for the question and for the kind words about the show. Always appreciate that. Look, as far as Wallstrom goes, and it, it happened again, uh, in the game against St. Louis, where if you look at all the forwards and the ice time that they got, Wallstrom was last. He had 11 minutes and five seconds of ice time. I think part of it is that Wallstrom, even though he's seeing time on the bars all line, he's still not doing all the things you want away from the puck. He took another penalty, a lazy penalty, in that first period, a tripping call. He tripped up Tarasenko. Uh, and that was right after Tarasenko had made it one to nothing. So you don't want to see that. That's his eighth penalty minute of the season. I, I think they're still looking for more consistency and more urgency away from the puck from Oliver Wallstrom. There is no doubt he can give them goal scoring, he can give them offense, but I think they're still trying to, you know, walk that fine line with Wally to not destroy his confidence, but also to uh, let him know that they need more from him in the other aspects of the game, not including, uh, you know, just putting pucks on and in the net. So I think that'll come. Hopefully, I think that Lane Lambert will handle Oliver Wallstrom in a more constructive way than Barry Trotz did. Whether or not that translates into better play from Wallstrom, we will see. But so far, I think that it'll be a more positive and constructive approach. And I hope Wallstrom will respond. Ken in Minnesota also sending us an email. Hey, Gil, just wanted to drop you a note about how enthused I am about Thomas Hickey's commentary. He's been a pleasant surprise with his breakdowns of the defensive play between periods. I feel his history as a good soldier during his tenure with the team is well deserving of the opportunity he's gotten. Kudos for the organization for recognizing his talent off the ice as well. Good luck to him. Hope he's able to join the ranks of all the great Islanders alumni on the other side of the mic. Thanks for all you do, Ken in Minnesota. Ken, thank you for the email. I've also been pleasantly surprised by Thomas Hickey. Always knew he was a good guy, knew he knew the game, but he's doing a really good job of breaking it down in between periods. And I think he has a bright future in broadcasting if he continues and you know, do, keeps doing as well as he is doing. So, yes, Thomas Hickey, a nice addition to the MSG Plus broadcasting team, and hopefully that will continue. We have got more to get to on this episode of the Locked On Islanders podcast. A former Islanders captain who helped the team get to the playoffs three years in a row during his tenure with the Isles. He's our Islanders' birthday of the day. We've got that and some parting thoughts. More to come on this episode of the Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is also brought to you by Simply Safe. If you've thought about securing your home with home security, but you've been putting it off, you'll want to listen up because right now, Locked On Islanders listeners can order the number one rated Simply Safe home security system. For 50% off. This is their biggest offer of the year, and you don't want to miss it. Here's why I love it. You basically, you know, have all the greatest technology available for you. It is easy to use, easy to install, and it gives you the ability to protect your home with all your windows, all your doors, monitoring sensors that tell you when. There is a real problem. Simply Safe simply has everything you need. It's got crystal clear HD live stream with all your security cameras and high tech sensors to really let you know when there is an emergency. So, 
Don't miss your chance to save big on the only security system I recommend. Get 50% off any new Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL. This is their biggest discount of the year. So don't wait. That's simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Time now for our Islanders' birthday of the day and Saturday will be the 49th birthday of former Islanders center Alexi Yashin. Yashin drafted second overall in the 1992 draft by the Ottawa Senators, came to the Islanders in a big trade in 2001 and helped the Isles get to the playoffs for three straight years. Uh, had a 32-goal season in his first year with the Isles, 75 points in 78 games. That was his best year with the club and basically stayed with the Isles through the 2006-2007 season, so five seasons with the Isles. Obviously, there was no 2004-2005 season. And then he went back to Russia to finish out his career in the KHL. Yashin, a dynamic offensive player, had 850 career NHL games, 337 goals, 781 points, and 401 penalty minutes, had 48 playoff games, 11 goals, 27 points, and 24 penalty minutes in the postseason. And, you know, he did well with the Islanders in the playoffs, seven points in seven games in 01 02. Four points in five games in 02-03. So Yashin really kind of picked things up. We're going to go back and look at one of Alexi Yashin's better games with the Islanders. Madison Square Garden, January 30th, 2002. Islanders and, of course, the Rangers in a crazy, crazy fight-filled game uh, made famous. Uh, for a certain goalie fight that took place. But we're going to concentrate more on the scoring rather than on uh, what happened in the uh, sidelines where so many players were just going crazy in these fights. In the first period, it was the Islanders getting on the board first. Our Islanders' birthday of the day, Alexi Yashin, his 21st from Marius Tchaikovsky and Brad Isbister at 444 of the first period, and it's 1-0 Islanders. Chris Osgood, by the way, the goalie for the Islanders. Dan Blackburn gets the start for the Rangers. The Islanders' power play gets to work after that. Radek Dvorak off for hooking, and Mark Parrish scores his 23rd. Tchaikovsky and Adrian Acoin with the helpers at 934. Then... Another power play opportunity. Dave Karpa of the Rangers off for tripping. Our Islanders' birthday of the day. Alexi Yashin is 22nd of the year. Roman Hammerlech, Adrian Acoin, the helpers at 16-11. And then a hat trick in the first period for Yashin. His 23rd, Tchaikovsky and Eric Cairns with the assists at 17-26. It's 4-0 Isles after one in the second period. Boy. Every fight you could imagine going on. It, Brad Isbister and Sandy McCarthy. Jim Cummins and Dale Puritan. Chris Osgood and Dan Blackburn both leave their crease. Thomas Kluchek of the Rangers dropping the gloves. I mean, everybody was seemingly involved in this fight at 13.06 of the second period. No goals, though, in the period. And it's still 4 nothing Isles. The Rangers do climb back into it a couple of goals in the third by Manny Malholtra, his fifth from Sylvain Lefebvre and Brian Berard at 521, and then his sixth from Brian Berard at 706, and suddenly it's 4-2, to two, but the Islanders get more. Mark Parrish, his 24th from Sean Bates and Michael Pekka, and then a shorthanded goal in the third period with Dave Scatchard off for cross-checking. Claude LaPointe with the shorty, Jason Blake, and Roman Hammerlick, the assists. Jeff Toms makes it a little closer with two and a half minutes left. Matthew Barnaby and Sylvain LaFay with the assists. But final score, Islanders six, Rangers three. For our Islanders' birthday of the day, Alexi Yashin, three goals. He's a plus two. 
He got five penalty minutes in this one, only uh, an assist away from the Gordie Howe hat trick. And he did pot the game-winning goal in 14 minutes and 51 seconds of ice time. So Alexi Yashin, uh, former Islanders captain, is our Islanders' birthday of the day. He is 49 years old on Saturday. You know, I mentioned the Gordie Howe hat trick. And Anders Lee had one in this game. Gordie Howe hat trick, a goal, an assist, and a fight. Lee had all three of those. So uh, I guess congratulations are in order. I, I still think the fight was a mistake. But overall, he won it and ends up with the goal and the assist as well. And, uh, you know, it's just good to see this team putting up goals. Four goals plus an empty netter make five. The defense is contributing. The offense is getting many lines involved in the offense. I mean, realistically, three lines out of the four getting at least one goal in this game. And I'll even add this. Uh, J.G. Pajot got off the schneid, got his first goal. Yes, it was an empty netter, but hopefully that is the beginning of him starting to pick him his offensive production up and good to see him get that goal so we will be back on monday with our key takeaways from the game on saturday and we will preview uh the upcoming games after that so lots to talk about there and uh i'll tell you it is a good time right now to be a fan of the New York Islanders as they have now won five in a row. I want to thank you again for making Locked On Islanders your first listen. Now for your next listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast. It's got the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. It's available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. That's going to do it for this episode of the Locked On Islanders podcast. Have a great weekend, everybody. Stay safe. And, of course, let's go Islanders.